All right, we've got a fun, the next, the next few minutes we have together, I'm really excited about this. Um, I'm gonna invite Esther Wafula to come up and Nina Angelis and um, also Nisha Gilliam. Would you guys come on and join me right here? We have a little conversation here this morning and uh, you guys are invited in. We'll just get comfortable here. Come on right up here and grab a seat. I want to introduce these girls to you if you've never met them. Man, it's going to be a great day. It's going to be a great day. We're going to have a conversation this morning, and then I'm going to bring up, uh, then we'll worship a little bit more, and I'll bring up Pastor Astor again. But welcome, 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 welcome. Thank God my voice is in better shape than it was last night. <laughs> I really, uh, this afternoon, I've, I have a word in my heart that I know God has put in there, and uh, for, for this, this moment, for this season, and you know, the enemy would love to keep us silent, right? But we're not, we're saying no. <laughs> okay, these beautiful girls, thank you. Hopefully, you're not too nervous. <laughs> thank you. It's going to be great. But these, these are beautiful women from our church. I want to introduce them to you today. Uh, we've got Nina over here, Nina Angelis. And Nina is, uh, yes, beautiful Filipino who is a licensed professional counselor where she's been in private practice for over 10 years, focused on anxiety and depression as a result of trauma and childhood issues that have happened. She sees adults. She sees children. She also is a Christian and a therapist. So uh, we've got her perspective today, which is going to be great. And then I'm so excited we have Esther Wafula with us. You may not know Esther. She's newer to our church, been with us for a couple years now. Esther is from Kenya, and uh, she's amazing. And Esther is a child of God, a wife. She's a mother as well. She's got two beautiful kids, and um, she works in the nonprofit sector uh, but Esther has studied counseling and psychology at a master's level, and particularly she's done some great scholarly work on poetry as a form of therapy, writing poetry. And so we've got an incredible perspective coming from her. She's worked with a lot of trauma victims in, um, I'm going to get this wrong, which country is it in Africa you did a lot of work in? Uh, well, I, I, I did mostly work in Kenya. Kenya, yes. yeah. Mostly in Kenya, a couple of the countries. Maybe it was Uganda. I'm not well, sure. The, the other countries I've worked in uh, from my nonprofit work. Yeah, not, yeah. Not counseling. Yeah. yeah, right, right. And then lastly, we have beautiful Nisha Gilliam, who's with us. Yes. Uh, Nisha is a resident in counseling. She's graduated fairly recently. Um, and she, from her master's degree, she's also a clinical psychology student. So she is uh, in her 20s. I won't tell you how old. She's single. If you have, uh, if you have good godly men, I, <laughs> we're taking applications on Nisha too. It's got to pass the test. But she's amazing too, and really is passionate about um, seeing God and heal, heal, um, heal men and women. But her, she, her background includes intensive in-home family counseling trauma-informed school counseling, behavioral therapy for children with developmental disorders, and she does counseling. She's in practice, too, right now for adults, children, families, and um, she is passionate about helping the lives of her clients. All right, so they're amazing. That's, that's who they are a little bit. <clears throat> so I would love it if you all would just give us a, f a few sentences um, because I know some of us are more familiar with the world of counseling than others. And so I thought it might be good to just tell us just a little bit about what brought you to counseling. Uh, what made you interested in studying it or in practicing it? Um, and maybe, Nina, maybe you can start for us. Okay. Um, I used to be an accountant at Georgetown University. I, I had a very good job. I made good money. <laughs> But then one day there was a minister at church and he spoke a word over me and um, I had to change direction. And the Lord gave me the purpose for my life. And that's how I, I became a counselor. I, I was 
literally called to do it. It was a difficult journey. I had to go back to school. There were many times that I would say, did I hear you right? Um, uh, this is too hard. But then I reminded myself, and I tell my clients this, we can do hard things. We are made to do hard things. That's how I became a counselor. Beautiful. I love that story. Esther, how about you? OK, so um, my journey to uh, studying psychology, um, a number of things led me to that path. First, um, uh, I have been a Christian since um, my teenage years. Uh, but I had a friend during my college days that uh, suffered um, from psychological problems. At the time, I did not have any way to process that, um, especially as she was also a Christian. I could not understand how that was happening. Um, later on in my professional life, um, as I've worked in, international, uh, in an international organization, I had a, a colleague that had um, psychological problems as well soon after giving birth. I was also very challenged by that, as she is a Christian, she's serving God, how can this be happening? And I think the thing that, the two other things that tipped uh, uh, the scale for me were um, my son David, our son David, who some of you might, might have seen, um, was diagnosed with autism in 2013. Um, again, this is a child that we had prayed for, um, even while he was in the womb, even before he was born, and I was very surprised by that. And then, as I grew older, I also noticed that uh, there are lots of challenges that we experience uh, during life transitions. And I thought, I need to find a better way to understand what's going on. So that led me to studying psychology, and trying to understand what is it about, um, uh, what can I do? How can I be better empowered um, and maybe even help other people to handle these kinds of challenges? So that's my journey. Beautiful. Thanks for sharing that. How about you, Nisha? Yeah, that was really beautiful, both of them. <laughs> uh, for me, uh, growing up, I always knew that I wanted to be in a helping field. I love just helping people. And originally, I wanted to be on the medical side of things. And counseling is still a behavioral health, but I was thinking about being a pediatrician. Um, and then I realized I'm not a huge fan of that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, I was more so interested in people and why people do the things that they do, human interaction, things like that. And then when I was in high school, I had a friend who was taking a psychology class. and. She was telling me about it, or how she was learning about the human mind and things like that, and it was just so interesting to me. I just wanted to know more about it, and so I signed up and fell in love with it. I, was, I just wanted to continue to learn more about it. And then I started an advice column in high school. Why did I think I was qualified at 16 to give people advice? I don't know, but a lot of girls in the school reached out to me and said, you know, what you wrote, it really touched my heart. Um, it really helped me, and I just loved that so much. So I decided to, to study it in college. So good. Love it. Love it. So I thought it would be good for us to just have a conversation about a couple of things. But one of the things, you know, we come into spaces like this and spend an intense amount of time with each other and in the presence of Jesus. And, you know, we get fired up and we get excited about God and the things that he's speaking to us and what we're sensing for the future. And then we walk out of here and probably today you're going to walk out of here into some pretty intense headlines in the news about what's happening outside of this building and around the world. And then you get into the obligations of life on Monday and uh, where does that fire go? And so what I thought would be good to talk about maybe is just how do we cultivate a sense of passion and purpose and mo just motivation in our everyday lives? How, you know, for those of us who might struggle a little bit with whether it's anxiety or just everyday depression, life is just difficult. Uh, how, do we, how, do we, how, do we, how do we get through that and keep that sense of passion going? Is anybody you can pop in. Well, for me, and it's something that I also like to cultivate in the people that I see, is that we have to discipline ourselves to have that, 
time spent with the Lord. It's a very simple thing, but we have to really have that discipline to do that. Early in the morning or is really a good time. But we have to say, I'm committed to do this because when I start my day with you, my Jesus, you guide me the rest of the way. It's, it's a very simple, simple but hard to discipline to do. Um, thank you. I think this is a very important question, um, and I love that you use the word cultivate, right? Uh, because the word cultivate suggests that you have a responsibility. There's something I have to do. There's something we have to do. Um, as Christians, sometimes I think we can um, live too much to God, but the word cultivate there suggests there's something we have to do. But maybe I could step, take a, a step back first and say, um, for us to think about purpose, and um, we, we need to, to ask ourselves, where does purpose come from? It comes from God. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, that you are Christ's workmanship, <coughs> created in him to do good works. There are already some things that God has created for each one of us to do, to accomplish. In the book of Acts, the Bible also says that he has determined even where you live, in which time in history you would be born. So the very fact that you are here in this generation, that I am alive in this generation, is ordained by God. So there is a purpose. So you, you're not... Um, you're not creating your own purpose. You need to first discover the purpose that God has for you. And you can explore that through prayer, through spending time with God. And then once you have discovered that, or as you continue to discover that, um, then you, you need to keep drawing close to God. And I think the analogy I would like to use is the analogy of a, a hearth. Um, a hearth is, you know, those of us who are from uh, the African continent will, will know, and maybe even in other, uh, from other places, we have this uh, fireplace, and we have to use wood. You need to feed the fire. You need to nurture the fire. So how do we nurture that fire? And uh, some of the ways that I think you can nurture that fire is, as we have already said, reading the Bible, uh, spending time with God, prayer, but also what makes your heart sing? What makes you happy? What, not, not just happy, but like really deeply, what, connect, what is the sweet spot between <laughs> what God has called you to do? We have already talked about your purpose. What God has called you to do, the context around you. There are things that the world is asking for you know, um, our sister here said how um, somebody spoke over her life about to become a, you know, to go into counseling. And our sister also talked about how in school, people would be coming to her to seek for counsel. Th there are, some of these things happen and they point to what God has called you. Things that you, you feel inclined to serve in. Um, so, uh, these are all ways in which you need to pay attention to. Um, and, you know, you continue to feed that learning, become a lifelong learner, be interested in investing in those things that are of interest to you. Um, so cultivate that, nurture that fire. Yeah, I definitely agree with, with, with all of that. And, and even when you touched earlier on discipline, I was thinking about that as well. Of like, I don't know if you guys talk about intrinsic motivation versus extrinsic motivation, but that's come up a lot with my clients of like, sometimes we don't feel that desire to continue on to wake up in the morning and, and get dressed and go to work and all of that, especially if you're struggling with depression. And so that internal motivation may not always be there. And so... Sometimes leaning on extrinsic motivation can be helpful too, 
which is why when you said discipline, that kind of <coughs> triggered something in my mind. Sometimes we have to just lean on that discipline of like, I really don't feel like getting up right now. Everything seems dark, but I'm going to do this for you, God. I'm going to wake up, and I'm going to open my Bible. I'm going to read your word, and I'm going to try my best to just continue on today. So, And that's been really helpful for a lot of people that I work with. So good, girls. It really is. Apologize. I'm hacking up a lung over here. <laughs> but it's brilliant. It's brilliant. So I think all of those things are so important in just cultivating that fire and that passion. And it's interesting that you're talking about how I think recognizing our purpose is tied to keeping that fire for Jesus strong in our life. That those two things are deeply connected. When we have our eyes on what Jesus has called us to do and who he's called us to be in the world. And that helps us, I think, because it's like we get Jesus' heart in us, right? So when, when, you, when you encounter Jesus and you see him, he starts putting his, his heart in, in your heart. Those things are so closely tied. So I love that you guys have brought up those things. That's really, really good. All right, let's talk a little bit about just the practice of counseling. And, you know, more and more in society, you know, people are talking about seeing their therapist and being part of it. And I wanted to have a little bit of a conversation about how does that work with our Christianity? And um, just, here's a good question, I think. So when we're struggling, how do we know whether we just need to kind of like suck it up, you know, put our face into the wind and just kind of keep trucking forward? Or if we actually need some help and we need to go pursue some counseling? Like how do we, what's, what do you think are some indicators that may be like it'd be a good idea to talk to a counselor? So, in the clinical world, if you have depressive symptoms, and depressive symptoms would be um, you're sad, you have a lack of motivation, your performance is poor, one sign that we forget is irritability. That's a very common sign, but we think, oh, we're just in a bad mood, and people around are saying, oh, you're in a bad mood, but that is a sign of depression. Um, but one thing in the clinical world is if it lasts more than two weeks and it interferes with your daily functioning, then you need to seek help. I'm not really a proponent of sucking it up. I, I don't kind of know what sucking it up means. Um, <laughs> sucking it up is, means I'm just going to push my emotions down and, and not acknowledge it. And so that's one, one thing that we want to acknowledge. And one of the things that I think is lacking for us as Christians is we tend to, OK, I'm just going to swallow my emotions. And what happens is it gets stuck in here instead of going out. And so now you're, you're unmotivated, and you're sad, and you're depressed because it's, it's stuck in here. And if you don't release those emotions, you, now you're beginning to feel it in your body. You feel it in your stomach. You feel it in your shoulders. You feel it in your chest. So that's my definition is, is that when it interferes with your daily life, even if it doesn't interfere with your daily life, you feel like you, know, you, you want someone to come alongside of you, you know, ask, ask for help. We remove that stigma of, of asking for help is weak. You know, asking for help is actually being strong. So that, that's my thought. It's really good. It's really good. Yeah. Yeah, that's so good. And I'm glad that you touched on the functioning piece because in the manual that we use to diagnose, the Diagnostic Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, the DSM-5, the criteria for almost every single disorder, whether it's anxiety, depression, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, there's a little tidbit at the end that says it causes impairment to your functioning. So that could be your relationships, your marriage, um, your ability to perform at work, um, all areas of your life, really. And if you start to notice that, like your sleep is disrupted, you're not eating as much or you're overeating, those kind of things that just bleed into your daily life, it's definitely a sign that you should probably talk to someone. But then even what you were saying, like it doesn't have to get to that point either. You can be proactive if you start to notice those things early on, just reaching out. 
Well, that's really good. That kind of requires paying attention to ourself. You know, having, having those moments of self-awareness and reflection, which I think prayer can really bring some of that out too. But tell us maybe how would a, <clears throat> when we think about going to see a counselor or who we could talk to, what's the difference between seeing just a plain old regular secular counselor, seeing somebody who's a Christian counselor and calling uh, just somebody who's a, a wise Christian friend? Like what, it, what types of things does a Christian counselor in particular provide that would be unique? May um, so I, I really thank God that um, more and more uh, Christians uh, are getting into you know, this service of counseling because I think for a long time this area has been you know, left to uh, the secular world. But in fact, um, everything we need for life and godliness is provided for in the Bible. Um, so Christian counselors, I think uh, maybe we can take a step back and say both Christian counselors and possibly um, secular counselors, what is common among them is that they both want um, to help people change, to help people thrive, to help people get relief from challenging symptoms and, and so on. Okay. I, I, th I think, and I'm just gonna use an example because it's kind of easier for me to process. I, I had a, somebody come to see me and she had both childhood emotional neglect and abuse by her father and her mother. So those things we could process in counseling. But she also was experiencing waking up in the middle of the night, feeling that there was a presence in the room. Or she would also experience kind of, when she would wake up, there would be marks on her body. Or she would, it would, she would describe it as kind of, you know, she would be awakened and be kind of in that state of half awake and half asleep. Uh, or being s chased in her dreams by really ferocious animals who were out to get her. She would wake up with sweats and feeling like she was being held down, she was captive. So in that assessment, I knew it was more than just something that we could process in counseling. And through getting a history of her, of her life, we know that there was an instance in her life where, where she opened that door to that demonic realm. And so I think that's kind of, we, we want to distinguish, and the Lord will give us discernment. If, if, you, may, if you get a history and you, you know there's, there's a, a history of witchcraft in your family, or there's um, voodoo worship, or, or anything like that. So, so we know that that is demonic and it needs deliverance. It needs the power of the Holy Spirit to cast out those demons. But there's also, you know, um, abuse and incest and all those things. Those things we can process with, with therapy. Um, I think it is important for us to recognize that uh, human beings are, are multifaceted. So we have a body, we have a mind, we have a spirit, um, uh, we, we have a soul. So um, I think uh, counseling seems to focus mostly on uh, matters to do with, um, you know, regular living, challenges to do with that. But then uh, there are some times when the concerns and the challenges that one is dealing with go so much deeper and they are at a spiritual level. And I think one good analogy that uh, we can use is when we think about the children of Israel, when God um, saved, delivered them, in fact, I think that is the, the word uh, that is used, he delivered them from slavery in Egypt, right? Um, and then after he delivered them from that slavery, then they spent years in the wilderness 
um, working out, or rather, God getting the, the slave mindset out of them. But before they could go to possess the land that, was, that God had promised them, he first needed to really deliver them. It was a powerful work that needed to be done to get them out of the, that kingdom um, and the bondage that they were in. So in a similar way, I think we can also think about um, individuals or even families, but let's talk about the individual. That sometimes uh, maybe there are strongholds that have held somebody captive, a spiritual, op op spiritual oppression, maybe because of iniquity that the person has um, you know, been involved in, a certain kind of sin that opened the door for the devil to get a hold of this person and plant a stronghold in that person's life. And um, that uh, kind of door then um, allows the enemy to have such a power and oppressive power over this person that patterns of evil can continue to, and oppression can, can have uh, sway over this person. So even if they went for counseling and that foundational aspect has not been dealt with. Um, whatever counseling is trying to do may not really get to the root of the issue. So there are times when deliverance is needed to deal with those kind of deep-seated issues and to break those bondages. As we said, if we use the analogy of God delivering the Israelites from the kingdom of Pharaoh, and you, you can remember from the Bible what a mighty hand it took for God to deliver the Israelites. It took repeated, repeated demands by Moses, or God through Moses, demanding from Pharaoh, let my people go, let my people go. And it took a lot, including um, the plagues, and you know, you know that story, and, and then even uh, the crossing of the Red Sea, so that there was a very clear demarcation between what the Israelites were as slaves and now that they were free. But then it took years, as you know, for, for that slave mindset to be removed from them. So I think, in my view, counseling can deal with this other part after one has been delivered from the oppression of the evil one. That's really good. It was interesting. <clears throat> I was in a conversation with a friend of mine. Um, she's not from here. You don't know her. Don't worry about it. But um, <laughs> she's been on a journey, a journey of healing, I would say, and um, for the last couple of years. And she was dealing with uh, abusive, like a cycle of abusive friendships that she was getting stuck in. And so she was talking to a counselor about, okay, how did I get here? How did I get stuck in? in this stuff again and again, these patterns where she's like, I don't feel like I'm enough. And so she's like doing all this work to try to be the best friend that she can and then constantly finding herself, you know, cut off for not answering a text message within two hours or something like that. You're the worst friend in the world. Um, you know, for something most of us would be like, what are you talking about? I, just, I, 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 was, I was in a meeting, I couldn't answer your text message. And you just wouldn't be worried about it. But she'd get you know, caught up in these things. And so she got to this point where she, she realized that while she was on this journey here, there was also something spiritual that had happened to her when she was in high school. And uh, some, there was some rejections that had come on her. And it just became this spiritual weight that she needed to get free of. And sometimes I think the things that we... Uh, experience can create a vulnerability spiritually that allow the enemy to come in and get a foothold. And it's like if you get free in one area, then it can create freedom in this other area spiritually, or you get spiritual breakthrough here and you find healing in, in this in this area. And she had to walk through a process of forgiveness in her life for some of those things and found herself free of this cycle of abuse that she had gotten stuck in as a result of that of that happening in her life. 
And uh, that's, it's, it, sometimes it takes us a little bit of time. Like it took her several years of counseling to just get to the point where she could recognize that spiritual connection that's there. I think for a lot of us that grew up in America or if you grew up in a Western context, we tend to have a very counseling first, uh, mental health first mentality about us. And we don't think about the spiritual dimension nearly as much. And uh, on the other side of the, the fence, I think if you come from, uh, it, from Africa sometimes, or there's a lot of other cultures that probably are the reverse. Like you think only about the spiritual and you're kind of suspicious of mental health professionals. But I just want to encourage you, man, there's a, a lot of power that comes when these two things can work together. And because they definitely affect each other. And so um, I, I thank you so much for being here today. And sometimes deliverance is, you know, we all, I don't know if you watch scary movies, but sometimes we think of it as like this big freak out moment. It doesn't have to be that. Sometimes it's just like there's something we just, it's this little, this little sin that just keeps nagging at us and we need to get free. It's just that simple. It doesn't have to be this big dramatic thing. It's just in a moment, you know, we recognize, okay, I got to release that thing. And then all of a sudden, we find breakthrough, and we're, uh, you know, maybe it's just as simple as forgiving, forgiving that, that parent that did that thing to us, and we are able to get through to the other side and find healing on the other side of that, uh, of that, that moment. Um, so thank you girls so much for sharing with us about that. Thank you so much. I really, I want to encourage you, uh, and we have all kinds of, if this is like, if you're thinking and you're like, well, maybe I need to deal with that thing I've been pushing down for a long time. If, you know, if that got triggered for you, we definitely, we have here at the church, we have lists of Christian counselors that we have referred people to. Of uh, Sinina is, she, uh, she works out of here, I think one day a week, but we send a lot of people to Nina, we send people to Nisha, there's a couple other Christian counselors that we work with in particular. Um, that you that you can see if you need those resources, just ask any of our pastoral team and they can pass that along to you. But I also want to mention uh, Pastor Sharon and Bill's life group. They have a life group specifically around deliverance and getting free of things. So I want to encourage you to take that journey with them if you're like, man, I think there might be something spiritual that I need to push through here. And so talk to, to talk to Pastor Sharon sometime today, and uh, you know start that start that journey. This, this season. I think God has freedom for all of us on the other side. And while I'm talking about life groups, let me just make a plug. We've got a couple of women's life groups going on here. And I want to encourage you, make sure that you're in community with other Christian women. Man, it's just, that's where we learn. That's where we grow. That's where we, that's where we, we just encourage each other in the Lord. And um, I know uh, Maggie's had one that's been going for a long, long time, which is amazing. I know uh, I think uh, Martinez sisters have had, had one going. There's ones, all kinds of one, but there's some new ones that are starting up as well. I don't know if you know Carolyn Barker. Um, I don't, Carolyn, are you here somewhere? Yes, she's right there. She's on the third row. She's starting a brand new one for some of our young women. So uh, if you're a millennial or younger and looking for a place to plug in, if you're newer, this is a great one because we're going to be pulling new folks together for this. And uh, there's all kinds of options, but don't do don't do the journey alone. We don't we're not made for that. We're not meant for that. And um, I think there's a just there's a beautiful connection that can happen between uh, our life group leaders, our sisters in Christ. You know, having people pastors in our life who will invest in us, having counselors who will be there with us, having folks who walk the journey with us. This is how God meant it to be. Is for us to be in it together. And I think that's so important for us to be able to walk out the purposes of God in our life, to, to fan the flame uh, the, the, of, of the gift of God in us that God's designed us to be in the world. Can we just pray and, um, and just, we're going to just pray that God continues to, to bring his touch on us. God, we just give our, our hearts to you, our lives to you, Father. We just pray that you'd speak to us about the ways that you're encouraging us and challenging us to grow in you. Father, we just, God, I ask your healing touch be on every single one. God, those who've had a lot of pain in their past, Father, I just pray that you would uh, complete the work of healing that you've already started in their lives. God, I pray that you just speak to us. Uh, Father, I pray that you'd bring freedom to us, Lord Jesus. Speak to us about what we need to let go of, God, where we need to forgive, where we need to, uh, to move forward in you, Jesus. We just thank you for that. In your name I pray. 
Amen. Amen, amen. Can you just thank these girls one more time? Yeah. I love you all. We love you all. Amen, amen. Thank you so much for joining Word of Life Church online today. Our prayer is that your faith was strengthened and you were inspired. We would love for you to be a regular part of our online family. The best way to do so is by clicking that like button, hitting subscribe, and ringing that bell so you don't miss out on any life-changing content. If you have more time today, go ahead and click another one of our videos right here. If not, we love you. We can't wait to see you online again soon. God bless.